The Beef School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pioneer Hybrid Canada. To find more Beef School episodes, go to beefschool.ca. Jay Strover here with realagriculture.com and we're here for another episode of The Beef School and I'm joined today by Karen Boschman of AAFC Lethbridge and today we're talking about starch. So let's start from the top and how important is starch in a cattle ration? Um, well, starch is the main source of carbohydrate in a feedlot diet and carbohydrates supply energy. So starch is, is a source of highly digestible energy. So it's very important for meeting the energy requirements of the animal. All right, so are all sources of starch equal? Not all starch is the same. It depends on the type of grain. So it really depends on the way that starch is bundled in the kernel, for example. So with corn, the starch is within a protein matrix. And so when that corn goes into the rumen, the bacteria first have to digest off the protein to gain access to the starch. And, that, and because of that, the corn is more slowly digested in the rumen. That's not the case for barley and wheat. So barley and wheat, the minute that kernel is broken open, the bacteria can enter into the, uh, and gain access to the starch. So it's more highly digested in the rumen. So because of the way that starch is bundled in the kernel, uh, those grains respond to processing in a different manner, which affects the energy availability of those grains. All right. Can you have too much starch in a diet? Uh, it's not really a question of too much starch. It's a question of making sure that you balance the starch and the rate of fermentation of that starch with adequate fiber and other factors to help prevent rumen acidosis. So the fiber, physically effective fiber, long particles, for example, uh, stimulate the animal to chew its cut or ruminate. And that's very important because during rumination, there are salivary buffers that are released and those go into the rumen and that helps buffer off the acids. So it's not a question of too much starch, it's a question of making sure that you reduce the risk factors for acidosis when you're feeding a high starch diet. All right, so let's talk about acidosis for a minute here. Let's <laughs> okay. define acidosis. Yeah, that's a hard one, but um, acidosis is a digestive disorder and it's associated with feeding high starch, highly fermentable carbohydrates. And acidosis is really the result of pH in the rumen decreasing to a point where there's a cascade of events in the rumen that are unhealthy for the animal. So when the pH drops, you have a change in the microorganisms that can function at that low pH, and you have more bacteria that can produce lactic acid, which further drops the pH. And when the pH drops and it's low for a while, you can have impaired barrier function of the rumen wall, the epithelium for absorption. Uh, you can have decreased motility in the rumen, so those acids aren't being moved to the site of absorption. There's, the rumen isn't being cleared out of the undigested material. And the bacteria that survive at those low pH can produce toxins that enter into the bloodstream and can cause uh, inflammatory response. So there's a whole cascade of events all because of the low pH in the rumen. All right, so what can we do to avoid acidosis? So um, acidosis is really a question of balancing the rate at which those acid, the amount of acid that's produced in the rumen and the rate that those acids are produced with the a rumen's ability to buffer or absorb those acids or to neutralize the acids. So it's really a question of making sure that you're no overfeed to, um, or exceed the animal's ability to handle that and to provide, as I mentioned, adequate physically effective fiber that's buffering in the rumen. And there's other things, bunk management, for example, it's very important to feed consistent, um, consistent time a day, every day, the same amount, so that animals don't overeat. It's really a question of avoiding them eating too fast and eating too much. All right. So what about, let's go back to starch for a minute. What about yep. the weight of an animal? How does that impact the amount of starch in their diet? Okay, so a lighter animal uh, would be growing at a s slower rate um, and would have a lower energy requirement. So it wouldn't need as much energy. So you'd have to be careful when feeding a high starch diet that you don't over 
uh, feed grain over the re requirement of the animal or the animal will start depositing fat rather than lean tissue growth. Whereas a heavier animal has more requirement for maintenance and for gain and so it's much easier to meet that energy requirement with a higher starch diet. All right, so what about heifers versus steers? Um, well, that comparison, uh, assuming you have the same uh, genetic or, or the same genetic makeup, um, the same breed, um, a heifer at the same weight as a steer requires more energy because that heifer is closer to reaching its mature body weight. So it's actually putting on more fat and less lean. And so it has a higher energy requirement. So uh, a heifer would respond very well to a high starch diet or a high grain diet. So what about something like DDGs? How do they fit into this equation? Uh, well, DDGs, distillers grains, are the residual after the grain has been fermented. So all the starch is removed during the ethanol process. So you have a lot of soluble fibers. Now they're highly available and a very good source of digestible energy. So when you put DDG into a diet, you're removing some of the starch, replacing it with soluble fiber. But you don't really reduce the risk of acidosis because soluble fiber is highly fermented as well. So you just have to be careful to include adequate physically effective fiber and all those other risk management factors I, I talked about in terms of acidosis. So what do we need to know about swapping one grain source out for another? Yeah, sure, you want to be able to swap grains out depending on their availability and their cost, but you have to factor in the energy content of those grains, and the energy content of the grain depends on the starch content and how fermentable it is in the rumen. And so starch, so grain processing will dictate how fermentable it is in the rumen. So corn, for example, has a higher starch content than barley and wheat. So it might be 60 to 65% starch on an as-fed basis. Wheat would be 55 to 60 on an as-fed basis and barley would be 50 to 55. So there's some big differences between barley and starch and corn. But how available that starch is depends on how it's processed. So if you compare steam rolled, sorry, dry rolled barley to steam flake corn, there's going to be a huge difference there because that corn starch is very available. But if you compare dry rolled barley to dry rolled corn, the difference would be much less, maybe three to five percent higher energy in the corn diet compared to a steam flake, which would be five to fifteen percent. Wheat and barley are much more similar, so wheat has slightly more starch, so it has the potential to be slightly higher in energy content, but it's more rapidly digested in the rumen if they were both, say, processed in the same manner, so you have to be careful about the risk of acidosis a little bit more with wheat. And the other thing to consider is the protein content, which I think often isn't considered in the calculation, the cost. Corn is lower in protein than barley and wheat. So maybe three percentage units or more less protein in corn than barley. So if you're swapping out corn for wheat or barley, um, or you're putting corn in rather than wheat and barley, you're lowering the protein content. So you might need to add some urea or distiller's grains or canola meal, something like that. So you have to factor that into the cost. All right, thanks a lot, Karen. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah.